What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the Combat Corporation, your source of combat sports. I'm your host, Al, the Postmaster Morrow. Today, I have a gear review on the Onward Athletics Saber Training Gloves. Alright folks, as always, I am incredibly excited to bring you yet another gear review as today I have the Onward Athletics Saber Training Gloves and I'm really excited to do this review uh, because right before I took my summer long hiatus from the channel uh, going through a bunch of stuff, uh, the last video that I thought was posted and it must have messed up somewhere was this review actually so i have been thinking for the last couple of months that these review that this review was up already it was not it, something happened in the uploading process and the video has been lost ever since the only part of the video that i have is the bag work uh from a few months ago so if you see that i have hair in the video it's not because i magically grew it overnight it's because that bag work video was done around may or june actually so uh i'm still going to use that footage just because it's there and I really, really want to get this review out because I feel so bad, because uh, as disclaimer as always, uh, that these gloves were sent to me by Onward Athletics and uh, it was very generous of them to do so. I have two other pieces of equipment, uh, mitts actually, that they sent me that I'm doing a review on soon. That's why I was wondering, um, you know, why this video wasn't out there from months ago. So if anyone from Onward Athletics is watching this, I apologize so much for taking so long. I really don't know where that video went or what happened with it. But as always, disclaimer, this is a completely 100% unbiased opinion uh, video. I will not take money to do reviews or anything like that. I do not take words from the people. These are all 100% of what I need to get to you, the viewer, someone that might be a potential uh, buyer for gloves like these. I will not put anyone's health or safety at risk. This is all 100% an honest, unbiased review. Uh, so with that said, let's go ahead and talk about the Onward Athletics Sabre Gloves. Now, talking about Onward Athletics, I've known about them. I saw a lot of Facebook ads with them about... I'd say it was my senior year of college, so that would have been about 2019 or so. And I started to see some um, things about their mitts and their gloves, and they looked really good, and they were on my radar for a long time. And just for whatever reason, they're just one of those brands that it just escaped me from buying them. And I didn't really know too many high-end athletes that were using these, and uh, I probably could have done a little bit more research into that. But I do know that they have a training center down in Georgia, I believe, in the United States, and it's called the Onward Athletics Training Center. And that's where the logo came from and everything like that. And their big slogan, which I love a lot, is called Forward Motion Always, which you can actually see that on this glove alone. On the grip bar, actually, you can see it says Forward Motion Always. And then at the bottom, at the wrist cuff, it says FMA right there. So Forward Motion Always is their slogan, which is awesome. I love that because you can always interpret it to your own, uh, your own words. Uh, for me, it's I can always punch going forward because I am a forward puncher, or it just means no matter what happens, keep going, forward motion always, don't stop, keep going, right? That's basically the whole gist behind it with me, which I really like that about Onward Athletics. And you can go on their website and learn a little bit more about them as well. Uh, they have a bunch of different models on their uh, website. They have a professional model, they have a beginner model, and then this is like their intermediate model. The only thing I don't understand is that they have it labeled as a bag glove, um... I think that's because of another review out there and I'm not bashing it at all, but I definitely don't think they are a bag glove. I think they are an all around training glove. I can see why some people will want to call it a bag glove because of some design errors, if you will. But I, I think if you're smart and responsible, it's definitely not going to restrain you from sparring with these at all. In fact, I've used these in sparring. I, I actually like sparring in these quite a bit. I love hitting the bag in these too. They're overall great training glove uh, for that intermediate level, if not to a pretty decent advanced level guy. I, I still like using these. I like to think I'm at a decently advanced level, but you know, that's, I guess, my own opinion of myself. Uh, but when it comes to these gloves, you can get them in a couple different colors. I know they come in red. I believe they come in blue and uh 
yellow as well, uh, black and gold, and then black and silver. And here I have black and silver. And you can get them, and, and, and it's weird. They don't have 14 ounces, but they have 8, 10, 12, and 16 ounces that you can get. But I did not see 14 ounces on the website, which is interesting. So I would say you can get from 8 to 16 ounces, but that's not true. You can get 8, 10, 12, and 16. Uh, and, you know, and I assume maybe the hand compartment size changes a little bit, but for 16, the hand compartment size for this is good for me. I'm a heavyweight myself. Uh, so these gloves in general are actually pretty good as far as the sizing goes um, and everything along those lines and the different colors. So once again, my uh, exact model is they only come in Velcro as well or hook and loop closure. My exact model is 16 ounces uh, mm -hmm. in the silver and black colorway and these are the hook and loop closure, okay? So without further ado, let's go into the look of the gloves. You have the Onward Athletics uh, logo, which for me just looks like a, like it's kind of like those old school fast forward things on the old DVD players or VHS players. Uh, it's like the arrow basically saying to fast forward. And that's what I see with this, with that nice oval logo, which is screen printed onto the glove. So it has not worn out at all, uh, which is really nice. The whole back of the glove besides that logo is all black. In fact, you don't get a different color on the other side except for this Onward logo, which looks really nice here. It's that nice, like, uh, futuristic uh, type of text. So you got that Onward logo there also with black in the background. The thumb attachment is also black, and it's made out of a separate material from that, but we'll go into that with the design. Then we come, once again, to the silver on the grip bar with the black background, and this is a forward motion always. Then we got the palm, which is silver. Uh, it has like that L shape here, like the reverse L shape, silver color. And then the inside of the thumb is also a silver color. Uh, the stitching is all black, so you can't really see it all that well because it blends in with that uh, material so well. The wrist piping is all silver as well. And then you also have a plastic Onward Athletics logo here. Uh, and this is a plastic badge that says FMA in black, Onward in silver. And then you have that in black instead with a silver black background unlike this which is silver with a black background and then on top of it here tells you what ounces you have here that's also screen printed right onto the material 16 ounces and then when we open the wrist cuff which is really strong velcro by the way uh, the inside of the glove is all black with a tag that says made in pakistan right there uh, so that's something uh, it says uh, 16 ounces as well uh, made in Pakistan. Let me see if I can get that a little bit more focused for you guys. There we go. You can see that right there. Probably not because my finger's in the way. But uh, they are made in Pakistan. They are 16 ounces. But when we talk about the build of the glove, the entirety of the glove, except for one component and the Velcro, of course, and the inside. So I guess not the entirety of the glove, but the entire outer shell of the glove is made out of a synthetic vinyl material. You know, some people will call it an engineered leather, if you will, but it's basically vinyl that you get in a lot of other uh, gloves at this level. I'd say it's a stronger vinyl than most Sanibel gloves out there. Uh, and it's kind of like, I even say it's maybe a little bit stronger than say the ringside IMF tech vinyl, uh, you know, because of what that is. It doesn't have like the diamond grooves in it to prevent the ripping, but it is a nice strong vinyl and actually is a thick layer and stretchy layer of this vinyl over the entire thing so you know that engineered or synthetic leather faux leather whatever you like to call it and it is a very bendable or, or malleable uh type of vinyl material as well so it stretches and it it's very mobile to prevent it from ripping so much because if it was so tight together it would just rip like paper uh so it's definitely not a fragile vinyl at all it does have that you know smell of chemicals a little bit to it when you get it out of the box as most vinyls will but that is all throughout the entirety of the glove down to the wrist cuff and even the the piping and the palm is also made out of that vinyl material uh, when we talk about the knuckle padding and that's for the entire back of the glove and the thumb you have for sure it's a blend from what i was talking with them about you have some high density foam in there with some EVA base layer, basically to give it a decent firmness and to keep the foam in place. It's all one solid fit and feel, and that's what these gloves are made to do, actually. That's one constructed piece of foam. Uh, you know, it, except for this, maybe they just stitched it on. You can tell because the stitching is there. It's a different contour for the thumb. I think it's made out of, the, well, it feels exactly the same as the knuckle padding as well. Only I will say that the thumb is just a touch touch softer i think that's just because where it is and because it's a thinner piece of foam 
uh, but you have that type of feel all throughout the gloves down to the fingers. So it's a, it's like a medium soft type of feel to it. It's, um, it's not too firm, it's not too soft, it's right in the center. So I can see why people would maybe get that bag glove idea from it because it does have a bit of a firmer feel, but I still kind of put it in that medium firm, medium soft range. You know what I mean? It's not too hard at all. Uh, when you punch the bag, it definitely has a good give to it. Same thing when you spar. If you can see the glove kind of fold in like that and it breathes back really easily. So you have a nice high density foam, definitely some EVA base layer on the inside there. And maybe even one other sheet of um, like a different type of high density foam, like an open cell breathable foam. Uh, so I don't think it was designed to be a bag glove for that reason because bag gloves usually use just a closed cell foam and a closed cell foam only because it's a harder foam and it'll last longer and it's meant to take a pounding on the bag. Uh, but you can actually see here on this glove towards the tip of the fingers because of that there's some bubbling going on because of that high density foam that you get. So bubbling is normal with, with cheaper gloves uh, or you know I guess lower end gloves. I don't think these are lower end though. I just think the foam is just built different from some other gloves out there because of what that is. But you can see some bubbling here on the thumb as well towards the tip and then on the knuckles. And you can see that the same areas really on the right hand as well. Uh, so that's just normal. Foam will normally bubble, not too much. And it's, you know, I've had these gloves for, you know, a little over six to seven months, I would think at this point. And, you know, up until now, uh, you know, it hasn't bubbled any more than what they were, uh, than what they are already. Then when we go to the palm and the wrist area, the palm is all nicely padded. So, you know, it looks more like a tie glove because of the composition of the glove, of it being kind of more smaller and compact compared to, uh, you know, other boxing gloves that like eat the entirety of your arm and stuff, you know. Uh, this is definitely more of a tie glove to me, uh, just because of the short contour of the glove. And then on top of it, when you look, at this you can see how thick that padding is which tells me that it's nice to catch kicks with these in fact they are I sparred in these it is very nice to catch kicks in these it's very nice to do you know partner mitt drills with each other with the gloves because the palm is incredibly padded and the uh, grip bar is super super soft it feels like you're gripping uh, like a nice just like a bed frame uh, not bed frame yeah bed frame that'll be nice and soft the bed uh, bed mattress topper is what that feels like it's that nice soft foam that you can get a good grip on and I really like how that feels on my fingers uh, and then on top of it you can also see you've got a bunch of breathe holes going across the base of the upper part of the palm and then in the thumbs as well and then there's also all that type of mesh so the uh, so the glove has a lot of breathability to it and that's a very nice quality if you think that your hands overheat that never happens in these uh, which is nice and then on top of it the entirety of the wrist cuff is also incredibly padded I will say towards the bottom here uh, on the outside it is very stiff uh, so I think they definitely put like a bunch of uh, closed cell foam really stiff closed cell foam so your wrist stays stable so when you punch it doesn't have anywhere really to go to keep your wrist in a nice comfortable spot but when you go to the other side here you can feel almost like a rubber patch that really once again that high density i mean um that high density closed cell foam not open cell uh foam towards the bottom here which is nice and uh stiff uh, not too bad though at all uh, but the rest of it is very very soft towards the top of the palm the other thing is you have a nice stretch almost like a satin material I'd say not satin quite but it's like a, it's like a athletic cotton feel it's kind of like that dry fit pillow feel I always talk about on the inside and it is super soft and foamy it feels so soft right here when you touch it it feels like uh, the inside of a rival glove sometimes they have a really soft foamy texture to the inside of it and it's stretched tightly and it's very padded and there's tons of room on the inside and my hand fits perfectly on the inside of the glove here which is really nice and although it's a shorter wrist cuff which does not always mean the best wrist support and in this case the glove does kind of lack a little bit in wrist support but you can see when i push this back it snaps forward pushing it down though it does snap down a little bit and there is definitely some discomfort right now even as i push down side to side not as much but going backwards it does stabilize it because of that wrist and just to kind of show you, uh, actually, I'll just do it with the right hand glove because it's out. Um, you know, trying to balance the back of the glove usually 
you want it to balance like this. It's only balancing right now because I'm letting it. If I relax my hand, it just kind of falls down. If I do that again, you if you go right into the center of a glove and you don't, it, so I'm really making it balanced because I'm pushing that part of my finger up. But then when I do this, right, still balanced because I'm in the center of the padding. But if I move it over where you want it, and usually the middle of the glove is right by the wrist, it falls right over. So it's definitely a bit more of a top heavy glove. I like that because it's called the saber glove. So I imagine you're trying to fence with someone, you know, like a saber glove, it's constantly going forward. So you're constantly jabbing at stuff. I like that forward motion that it has kind of like in the name. Very comfortable on the inside, tons of room on the inside of this glove, which was really surprising because you get cheaper gloves and it's usually tighter or they have so much foam uh, over the knuckles and they have so much stuff on the inside of the hand to protect your knuckles. I was actually able to put gauze and tape, like a big boxing pad on my knuckles and wrap my hands up nice with these gloves and actually have them in there, which is something that I was really impressed with. If you like Muay Thai, they have some of the best grips compared to some other Muay Thai gloves out there. I can get really good grips with it. I saw some reviewers really did not like that the thumb attachment here is actually made out of like a canvas or like a uh, nylon type strap. It's just basically, it just seems like a cotton strap to me, uh, kind of like that you'd get with like a cable or something like that, uh, like a ratchet strap. It feels like that material. And they don't like it because look how far out the thumb comes. Now, if you've seen a few other of my videos, I like a more loose glove because I like to really parry and you know move around, but that's more of an MMA thing. So I definitely see why people wouldn't like that in boxing because we obviously put the thumb attachment there to stop thumbing of the eye. And that is very easy to do with this glove as it was with another glove I reviewed, but the name escapes me at the moment. Um, but I mean, it's also like, if you're not a jerk, you're not gonna thumb someone in the eye. And if you constantly have your hands open when you're punching too, then your technique is off. So for me, it's more of a technical issue. I would just keep it closed because it is a very nice, comfortable thumb and it guides me perfectly here. And it keeps my hand protected. I've never smashed my thumb in this at all because it hides perfectly behind the knuckle here. And it's nice and padded at the tip. I've never thumbed anyone in the eye, even with gloves that have detached thumbs. I've never thumbed anyone in the eye. So you just keep your hands closed and don't be a jerk. And if you catch someone doing that, that's when you tell them you need a new pair of gloves. Is when, the moment that they do that, those are your bad gloves now. Uh, you know, you're gonna do it that way. You're gonna be dirty like that. Don't use those gloves. That's what I would do. But in this case, I, I think they're a perfect sparring glove as well, especially for someone that needs a good training glove. But uh, you know, let's go into the bag view and then we'll come back with a final verdict and kind of get some more thoughts on that after. So first thing I love about these is like they say, the saber, it really makes straight punching really fun. It makes all punching fun in general, but I love the comfortability and the balanced way towards the front. You know, I do like a front heavy glove most of the time. Uh, you know, balanced gloves are always great, but I love that the weight is all forward because I can just let my hands rip. I can punch really fast. I can wail into the bag because the knuckle padding is so well protected. Uh, and overall, they're so like compact as far as like the figure goes that it's really easy for me to grip. I feel like a really nice uh, Muay Thai glove, a nice boxing slash Muay Thai combo. I love hitting the bags with these. Uh, I know they're marketed as a bag glove, but I can definitely spar with these too. But overall, I, I do use these for bag work. They're a lot of fun. So here we go with the nice onward, and there you see me pointing at that. And it has a really basic, but yet nice look to it as far as the onward logo goes. You can see all the nice little details there. And for me, it kind of looks like something futuristic. It, it pops out really nice in the gym. You definitely look like you have a good time with these gloves. And I think you'd enjoy getting hit in the face with that big Onward Athletics logo. All right, folks, so my final verdict for the Onward Athletics Sabre training gloves is, I think it's a very, very good glove for an intermediate user. And, and the reason why I say that is because, I, you know, I'd even kind of give these to a beginner even. Uh, do I think pros would prefer these compared to other gloves? Maybe, but not entirely. Uh, you know, they do a good job and they get the job done above a lot of other gloves. And the materials that you have going on here are definitely stronger than a lot of the cheaper gloves. It definitely blows like a Sandoval Essential that you get for 20, 30 bucks out of the water. It, I think rivals me personally, like the Tidal Classic Elastic Gloves. Those are made out of leather though. And then it rivals like Ringside Bullets or the Ringside um, IMF Tech Gloves that I love so much, you know. And they do a really good job because these feel like 
a decent like tie glove too at the same time it feels like uh you know it's like the same functionality of like fairtex not quite as high quality because fairtex obviously uses a high quality leather in all their products uh, some gloves use synthetic as well but as far as these gloves go you know they really do an outstanding job for what you have uh, you know, I, like I said, a couple of the reviewers, and I'm not naming names because it's not me bashing them at all, did not like that the thumb attachment was so loose and it didn't use like leather or synthetic leather. For me, once again, that's just a personal preference thing. For me, if the thumb is attached, I think, yes, it should be a little tighter than this, I guess. But for me and like Muay Thai and wrestling, I need the availability of my hands for big glove sparring. And I think maybe some guys that just do boxing don't understand the grips quite as well. Uh, you know, even in boxing, we did a lot, a good chunk of wrestling and grappling in our boxing program because we need to learn how to get in and out of a clinch easier every day. Uh, you know, because if you hurt someone, odds are they're going to tie you up. How can you negate that? How can you get away from that? So I think this glove is perfect for that. But I would say this. If someone's thumbing you in any glove, that's like, the, and they're doing it intentionally, that's when you tell them you can no longer use those in sparring. I, in the many years that I've been in boxing, have never seen someone thumb someone in the eye in training and I've never done it. And I remember, you remember I reviewed those old school boxing gloves by Top Boxer uh, that literally had the detached thumb that was part of the design. I never thumbed anyone in the eye with those and it never bothered me. Uh, I've been head butted, I've been low blowed, I've been rabid punched, but I've never been thumbed in the eye. Uh, so I just don't think that's an issue that someone would actively have to look out for unless there's malicious intent and at that point i would trust that your coach or a trainer that you have in your gym would then look at someone and say you can no longer use those because of that those are now a bag glove so they put it on the website that yes it's a bag glove i disagree i think it's a training glove and i think they operate well in sparring i love sparring with these uh are there other gloves that i like more than these of course uh, do I think these are good? Absolutely. Uh, but there are obviously some issues that I would fix. And starting with that is the foam, I think is good. Uh, it took a decent amount of time. It didn't take very long to break in as well. And, uh, you know, compared to some other gloves even uh, that take a decent amount of time to break in, these did not. They were pretty much ready to go when you got them out of the box. But they did get a little softer over time, which is fine. And that's where the bubbling came in. Do I think that they're going to bubble so bad that they're unusable? No. Do I think after a year and a half to two years, will that happen? Yes, I do. Um, I definitely think that the synthetic material on the outside is super strong. It is obviously durable uh, because there are even some high-end gloves with leather or synthetic products that fade, that have the logos go away after a prolonged period of use and whatnot. And to be honest, I still use these to hit the bags and sometimes bar with as well because they're comfortable. That's the big thing that I can put on these gloves is that they are arguably one of the more comfortable gloves that I've used because of it. The one place that I think it lacks is definitely wrist support. Um, I think the knuckle support is perfect for you. The, the knuckle protection rather is really good. I think that works for anyone. Uh, it has a decent pop to it and it has a decent uh, recoil too. So punchers could really like using these. Combination fighters would really like these. Guys with brittle hands, I think, would do a decent job with these because of uh, the foam comp composition on the inside. But the wrist support is definitely where the glove does lack. And that's primarily because it is a shorter wrist cuff. The only glove that I know of that really pulled off a shorter wrist cuff that had incredible wrist support compared to others was a Hayabusa T3. And that's because of the dual, dual X draft system. And they have that splint going down the back of the glove to prevent it from going anywhere. Whereas these do not. It is simply just a flippity flop glove going this way. And this is virtually the wrist support that you have with Velcro for most gloves too you know that's the thing velcro gloves for me just aren't as supportive in the wrist most gloves aren't it's really more for convenience i would love to see these gloves have maybe a lace-up version and then maybe uh, you know just to kind of maybe calm some true boxers down that i think have that worry i see i started boxing then went to mma so i see both sides of the spectrum same thing with kickboxing and stuff so i once again with the thumb attachment not being leather or synthetic i don't get the big deal um, it doesn't come off as cheap to me. It might just be the way that they did that. I don't know. Um, and maybe they wanted more flexibility with these. They wanted you to be able to open and close your hands so well. I don't know. Uh, but that's just kind of the idea behind it. But overall, I mean, it's just a wrist support that does a bad job for me. 
and, and I have jarred my wrist once or twice with these uh, just because of that wrist and how top heavy these gloves are. It is not a very well balanced glove as far as that goes. It once again will just fall right off, especially if I do it this way once again. So I'm kind of keeping my fingers up like this because I'm balancing the bottom part here, but the moment I let that go, it's gonna fall over because of all that top heavy weight. So if you don't like that, that's something you might wanna watch out for. The other thing, here's the thing I was surprised that they didn't complain about was the big plastic badge at the bottom. Uh, I don't like plastic on gloves like that. I, I prefer like canvas or cloth or just screen print it because this, like I worry it's smooth here, you know, it's not bothering me, but my big worry is, and this is once again a nitpicky thing, from boxing, this has happened to me before instead of the thumbing of the eye. I've had people's plastic badges actually cut me before because God forbid the stitching come out of this part here and then start cutting you because plastic has a decently sharp edge at the end of it. Do I think that will ever happen? No. Has it happened to me before with other brands? Yes, it has. And I don't like that. That's the one thing I don't like is that plastic badge. I prefer cloth. I prefer just a screen print. Just do that. Don't overcomplicate it, you know? Uh, but that's just my opinion anyway. But overall, the design looks good. They're not, they're fairly basic to look at. Uh, they really perform well. They will last you. I would, I would give them a good shelf life of at least two years if you took good care of them or even longer if you use them every single day. And that's the thing that you can do with these, especially for that, you can use them every single day. One thing though, I would not put a price tag of $80, which is what these are at, $79.99. I would put them at like a price tag of $60, the same thing that you can get them for, for the ringside IMF tech. I think this is a solid competitor to that. But $80, I think is just a little bit too much because at that point, that's when you start to teeter-totter on, are you gonna pick between these or Fairtex, which has some models that are for like 80 bucks like that, like BGV1s are like $70, $80. Are you gonna pick between those or these and that's where you start to think about that that's where you start to play that dangerous game if you're a brand in my opinion i would put these at the 60 dollar mark market them as these are our our middle line glove they are super comfortable for a beginner and an intermediate guy because i don't think pros are going to immediately go for this glove here i think they're going to go go for something more expensive uh that onward might sell uh but overall i do think that these gloves perform well but the price tag and the wrist support especially, I think is where they fall short. Do I think they're great? I do. I think they're a really great glove for a beginner to intermediate level, which is why I give them a nice eight out of 10 in that department. But I think if you're someone that's at a higher level, they are definitely a seven out of 10 uh, because of that. I think they're gonna last you a good long time. If you take good care of them, make sure you disinfect them after each and every use. Oh, not each and every use, but you know, just don't leave them in your bag overnight. But you can even do that because of how breathable they are. Look at all the holes, all the breathing holes. So that's nice. Uh, but overall, I think you can use them for boxing, kickboxing, MMA. I think they fit every single combat sport, which is why these are gonna be so great. I think they'd sell out even fast. If you lowered the price just a little bit, put a 14 ounce option too, which is another thing which was interesting. You can get them once again in eight, 10, 12, and 16, but no 14, which is interesting. Uh, I put that option for people too. And then I think these gloves would be absolutely perfect. Uh, and then I'd put a splint here across the wrist. But obviously, you know, they're doing that kind of like fair text and stuff because when you, if you guys are just boxers and you don't know, when you get a tie clinch, you curl your wrist down like this. So when you put the glove on, right, you have that part open and the splint would prevent you from doing this because you get a decent grip here, but when you curl your wrist down, you're basically trying to crank someone's neck down. It's uncomfortable. They don't like it. So overall, that is my opinion on the Onward Athletics Sabre Training Glove. Forward motion always is a perfect analogy for these gloves. They are very much a nice combination puncher's glove. Uh, definitely a mathematician or a surgeon in the, in the ring, as you would call them, would really appreciate these gloves as I do here. Uh, so with that said, guys, thank you so much for watching The Combat Corporation, your source for combat sports. Please give this channel a like, comment, and subscribe as we were so close to 5,000 subscribers. We're about 100 off, and I would really appreciate it. That's such a milestone. This channel would not exist without your constant viewership, and I really appreciate every single one of you. Uh, and above all, 
not just the like and the subscribing part, comment. Let me know what you thought about this video and let me know about any other piece of equipment that you want me to review in the future. Uh, I got a couple more videos coming out here in the near future, as always, and I'm going to try and do some other videos as well, not just related to gear reviews, as always. Uh, also, follow me on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, every other fa uh, social media thing that you can think of, and I'd love to talk to you on there. But... With that said, folks, thank you so much for watching this episode, and I'll see you 